This video is all about the Wahoo Kicker Direct Connect and how it now works with Zwift. In today's video, I'll give you an overview of what this is and how it works. I'll discuss who would benefit from using one of these. I'll then put it through its paces in Titan's Grove with its continual gradient changes. I'll then go into a Llama lab test using erg mode, checking the responsiveness there. And then I really put it to the ultimate test by cooking microwave popcorn in the Llama lab while riding my kicker. Yes, this is a really good way to test this out. I'll then cover some tips and some tools that you can use to diagnose any issues you're having connecting to a Kicker Direct Connect connected device. And then I pull out the crystal ball to discuss where I think this technology is heading in the future. Okay, starting off today with what this actually is. It's an alternative to using Amplus or Bluetooth to connect to and control compatible Wahoo smart trainers. At the moment, it will turn a Wahoo Kicker 5 or a Wahoo Kicker Roller into a network connected device, just like a printer. In fact, exactly like a printer. Once connected, it uses multicast DNS for discoverability on the local network, the same broadcast domain. So it needs to be on the same subnet as your Zwift machine or Zwift device to work. It has zero configuration setup using DHCP to grab itself an IP address, and it listens for TCP connections on port 36866. And well, okay, nerdy stuff aside, just plug it into the same network as your Zwift machine or Zwift device, and it will likely just work. You can plug it directly into a machine if you like with an ethernet port, a Mac or a PC, which will then create a network of two hosts. And again, the zero configuration will mean it just works. I'll cover some more troubleshooting later on in the video. At this point in time, all Zwift platforms are supported, except for Windows. That's coming soon in the update in a few days. So who needs Direct Connect and what are the benefits of using a device like this? Well, if you're in an environment where you're having Ant Plus dropouts, Bluetooth dropouts, or let's just say you're using Zwift on Windows and you're having a hell of a time with Bluetooth reliability, which is a common problem, it's gonna solve those problems. If you're using Apple TV and you're coming up against the two device connection limit, it's also gonna solve that problem because it doesn't use any Bluetooth connection slots to the Apple TV, which is important because there's more and more steering devices coming on board, which do. I'll put a link in the video description below to further nerdy details on how this works at a packet level. But for now, let's look at this in action. The hardware configuration that I have in the Llama Lab is the Wahoo Kicker 5 with Direct Connect plugged straight into a wireless access point, converting this hardwired Ethernet into a 5 gig Wi-Fi connected device. Over to the Zwift setup and you'll notice that I have both Ant and Bluetooth disabled on this machine, but that's not a problem because this uses Direct Connect over TCP. Hitting search, the kicker pops up there with that little Ethernet icon. We wait for that to connect. That's happy, controllable. Again, pops up straight away and cadence is detected automatically. Now where things come unstuck with this plan of not having Ant Plus or Bluetooth Direct is that heart rate doesn't work over Direct Connect. So I'll have to open up the companion app, which now enables the companion app paired Bluetooth devices to show up on screen. Give it a few moments. And we have ticker ready to go. So heart rate will be connected over Bluetooth. The others will be over direct connect. There's no hiding my excitement. 52 beats a minute. Let's get into 51. Okay, uh, might need another coffee before. Fifth, fifth. Okay, let's get to the writing. And for that, it's onto Titan's Grove with its undulating hills, which is a brilliant testing ground for trainer responsiveness. And I found the responsiveness from Direct Connect to be absolutely brilliant. No lag between what I was seeing on the screen and what I was feeling on the pedals. Similar to being directly connected with Bluetooth, which I do find more responsive than Ant or Ant Plus FEC. Another test I performed was the super tuck test where I stop pedaling, power goes to zero, cadence goes to zero, and the avatar should drop into the super tuck. So I stop pedaling right now. And before the cadence even drops to zero, the avatar's in the super tuck. So no problems there at all. I'll do a second test of that by resuming pedaling. And then I stop pedaling here. And before the cadence even drops out again, the avatar is in SuperTuck. So no problems whatsoever using the SuperTuck on Zwift with Direct Connect. And because I was very, very lucky with the timing of that test, we're just about to enter into some erg mode 20 second over and under sections. You can see on screen there in blue, that's the steady state section that I did for 250 watt ergs, nice and smooth. The Wahoo Kicker does do an element of smoothing to the power data, even with erg mode power smoothing turned off, but I had no problems whatsoever with the Kicker hitting the correct set point for my erg over and unders and steady states. 
as is the case with the Kicker 5 using AMP plus FEC or Bluetooth Direct. So that's a tick for erg mode control using Direct Connect with Swift. So you get the picture, everything just works. Now let's really mess things up by cooking some popcorn in the microwave oven while riding on Zwift. Okay, so what we have on screen here is the Garmin Edge stuck to the front of the microwave showing the Kicker 5 power over Ant Plus. We have the power from Zwift showing there on screen via Direct Connect. We'll hit go on this and as I fast forward through the popcorn cooking, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen with the Ant Plus signal. I do like it when a plan works and that plan also involves popcorn. So you can see Ant Plus having no end of trouble there trying to work with the microwave oven blasting out, but the Direct Connect sailing straight through it all, no drops whatsoever. Now as an added bonus after we have a look at my beautiful popcorn here, I'm about to have for lunch. Uh, the added bonus is that, well, it's not a good bonus, but we do see the Bluetooth heart rate monitor drop out on Zwift because the microwave also killed that. Jumping now to my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare the dual recordings that we took during that session. We have the Kicker 5 with Direct Connect versus the Kicker 5, the same trainer, recorded with Ant Plus. You can see straight through here, the Llama lab test, pretty much one for one, um, looking really, really good. So same trainer, one via Direct Connect, one via Ant Plus, all is looking good until I turn the microwave oven on. And that's back here. And you can see one shines and one, well, fails pretty dismally there. The Ant Plus dropouts, as we were seeing on the screen there, we're dropping out, dropping out, dropping out, and the Direct Connect, which was on 5 gig Wi-Fi, sails straight through and records the data perfectly. Just for entertainment's sake, I'll add all the other Ant Plus power meters I was recording in the Llama Lab whilst I was cooking the popcorn there, and you can see the connectivity was absolutely horrible. The one standout there being the purple line, kick a Direct Connect, not using 2.4 gig wireless, working absolutely perfectly, as it should. The lesson there is don't use a microwave oven anywhere near Ant devices. Now to my troubleshooting tips and tools to use if you're having any problems connecting to Kicker Direct Connect. Firstly, if you're using Zwift on Windows, you'll need to wait for the April 2022 update for this to be compatible. So give it a few days if you're a Windows user. Next, your network needs to be reliable, be it wireless or wired. Your network connectivity needs to be rock solid for this to work. If it's not, you're going to have a bad time, not just with Direct Connect, with everything that you try and connect to, be that Zwift, the companion app, things will drop in and out, you know the deal. Get your network sorted. I use a Google Nest Wi-Fi mesh set up here in the Llama Lab and the Llama household. It has three or four access points, depending if I have the kicker turned on or not, to extend the network coverage, and I have brilliant results using the five gig range. If you've ticked all those boxes and have everything set up correctly and the Kicker Direct Connect device is still not appearing on your Zwift device or machine, I highly recommend installing the Discovery app if you're on iOS or Mac OS and looking for the Wahoo Fitness TNP TCP entry. It'll likely be down the bottom of the list. If that shows up, you should be good to go. If you can't see that entry, then there's your problem. Zwift won't be able to find it either. For Windows users, just Google for Bonjour Browser or something similar and install that from a reputable source to do the same thing. Finally, on the troubleshooting side of things, and this one may seem a little strange because Direct Connect replaces the need to use Bluetooth, but it also requires the Bluetooth drivers or libraries to be installed on the machine that you're connecting with. Not a problem on anything to do with Apple, they've all got them installed, but on the off chance you've built yourself a custom Windows machine without a Bluetooth module, you'll still need to install those Bluetooth drivers for Direct Connect to work. The reason being is underneath it all, Kicker Direct Connect still uses Bluetooth FTMS. Okay, so onto the future, pulling out the crystal ball of where this is all going. Well, now all the work has been done on the software side of things to support network connected devices, smart trainers, and hopefully smart bikes soon. There's no need for it to be wired. As you saw in my video there, connecting this to a five gig Wi-Fi access point was rock solid, super fast, and was very resilient to a noisy network environment. At this point in time, if I wanted to connect a Kicker 5 directly to this Mac in front of me, I'd need the Kicker Direct Connect module. I'd need a ethernet dongle for this machine. I'd also need an ethernet cable for it to all work. Now, this is not the future that I wanted to live in. Switching smart trainers to built-in five gig Wi-Fi would get rid of all of this peripheral problem. 
Wired Ethernet may have its place in, say, special use cases like eSports or environments where any wireless connectivity just isn't an option. So maybe having dual Ethernet direct and Wi-Fi on smart trainers themselves is the future. And that's what I would really, really like to see. All right, with that, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching this one. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel, and we'll see you soon.